Today we can learn how to create highly realistic facial hair like this in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. Have a look at this photo. Have a look at the existing facial hair. And just so you know, let me tell you the secret. The secret to creating the most realistic facial hair is creating the most realistic brush for the hair. And the secret to creating the most realistic brush is to create the brush from something real. Make sense? Let me make it sense for you. What if I tell Photoshop, okay, Photoshop, let's sample this hair and create a brush out of this hair and add some variations to that brush so that when we paint, this randomness is automatically created. So let's do that. Create a brush from an existing hair. So let's zoom in and let's sample a hair which is clean, which is representative of all of the hair over there. So I think this hair would be a perfect contender. This one or this one. This one has a little bit of something over there. We don't want this hair looks fine, but it has something we need to clean that up, but that's okay. Let's select the rectangular marquee tool and let's just make a selection of that particular hair and then press Control or Command J. Okay, just work on this, turn off this layer. We don't need anything else. We just need to work on this and create a brush out of it, okay? Set the background color to white. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color and choose white. Okay. And let's turn this black and white. Click on the adjustment layer icon and let's add a say anything. Hue saturation and take away the saturation over there and on the top of this one. So this is the hair over there and we need to make it in such a way so that the hair is completely black and everything else is white. So let's add a curves adjustment layer and using this slider take it left and just when the hair starts to go away stop so this is all right over there it starts to go away over here stop and this slider take it from the left to right and when the hair parts of the hair goes completely black stop a good way to find this out is holding the alt or option and take it to the right just when you see the dots on the hair stop so at this point we see the dots we will stop just at this point that looks perfectly fine. And now let's build the hair and remove these side distractions. All we have to do, select the hair. You can use the eraser or the mask, whatever is your favorite. Click on the mask button, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black. Make the brush smaller and just paint these areas in black. Increase the flow 100%. You can also keep the flow a little low and just paint in these areas like that. Make sure there are no distractions on the side, just the hair, nothing else. We might have to zoom in even more and remove this particular distraction from there, this distraction. Let's make it a little pointed like that. And that's pretty much good. That looks good. Remove it. I know this is... Okay, we are done. Let's zoom out, let's zoom in. We just zoomed out. By accident, let's zoom into the hair. Where did the hair go? Let's zoom in, let's figure out, let's find out. Okay, there we have the hair. Actually, when we press Control or Command and minus, sometimes I press the end button and it goes just to the end of the page to the corner. Make sure you don't press the end. So there we have it. So all we need to do is to create a new layer. Press Control Alt Shift E. Now this is merge layer of everything everything merged, everything that you see in the canvas right now merged in one layer. Select the rectangular marquee tool and make a selection of this and then go to edit, define brush preset. So there you have it. You have created the brush over there and you can name it whatever you want. Let's, hey, I see a distraction over there. Make sure there is no distraction, okay? I'll just go ahead and take the brush and simply paint that area with white. See another distraction over there. Make sure there is no distraction, okay? Let's zoom out and let's see if there's any other distraction. No. With this tool, make a selection and then edit, define brush preset. That's perfectly fine. And let's name it beard one. Hit enter. And there you have the brush. Now, if you paint with it, with black selected, see the same exact same thing. Increase the flow. The same thing, right? Now let's go ahead and delete all of this. We don't need it anymore. 
let's turn this on now we need to sample a color from this so click on this one and let's sample a color like that it's okay we can take care of color later we can change the color later don't worry about it right now let's hit okay now if you paint over here with this on a new layer click on the new layer icon and let's create a new layer and then if you paint with it it kind of is this way it doesn't look right does it so it doesn't go to windows brush settings now your whole objective let me just zoom in and let me put it to the side your whole objective is to match this area of the brush settings to that of this area because right now we want to create a beard line over there so we need to match this area to this area that's your whole objective right now. okay so let's start with shape dynamics and let's increase the size jitter to 100 percent now what does jitter means jitter simply means variation to what degree do you want variation when you paint so when you paint it right now, it's a small. When you paint it again, it's big. When you paint it again, it's bigger. So how much of a variation you want? That is jitter. And size jitter means how much of a variation you want in size. There's another thing called opacity jitter, how much of a variation you need in opacity. Okay, so size jitter, that's fine. Now, you need to determine minimum diameter. You cannot have hair as small as a molecule. You cannot have that. There's the minimum size of the hair you want for the beard. So you need to determine the minimum size. Now, what is the minimum size? Have a look at this hair. So this is the hair that you sampled, right? This one is the hair that you sampled. And find the smallest hair that you can find over here. So this is the smallest hair. This hair is how much percentage of this? This hair is, I guess, 30% or 40% of this. So we will select something like 30 or 40%. Let's choose 42% and that's fine. Okay. Now, angle jitter. How much of a variation in angle do you want? Do not increase it all the way to 100. The beard is not growing all the way, it's not. So let's increase it just a bit. See, you need to match it with this. I guess 4% is fine, have a look. This should match. Now, don't flip X and Y right now because it's not cross hatching. I'll tell you one more way in which you don't have to flip it. I'll tell you one secret later but right now let's make sure the angle is four percent and everything off now let's come to scattering increase the scatter this one should match with this one okay scatter see it should match let's move a little bit this much is fine i guess all right this is fine now let's come to transfer let's increase the opacity jitter to 100 percent and that looks good, May not 100%. We don't want a hair to be like with 10% opacity or 5% opacity, we want it to be visible. So let's increase it to like 70%, that's fine. Now, very important thing, and this is very, very, very important. If you come to shape dynamics, and then there is angle jitter, Inside of angle jitter, there is something called control. And control, you can set this, you can keep it off, you can also set this to something called direction. Now, what do we mean by direction? If you paint in this direction, and that's why you don't have to check flip X and Y jitter. If you paint in this direction, see, the hair is coming out from one direction. If you paint top from bottom, the hair is coming out from this direction. So you can control the direction of hair by painting in whatever direction you desire. Okay, so at this point, if I paint straight, it's coming in that direction. You can also go ahead, go to brush tip shape and just change the direction just a little bit like that if you want to. And there you have it. If you paint in this direction, it's coming out straight. Let's make it a little more like that. Okay, that looks great. Now, once you're done with all of those settings, you can also go ahead and increase the spacings because if you don't, if the spacing is low, you don't want to paint it in one go like that. You don't want to do that. So let's increase the spacings to somewhere around like so, 33% and start painting over there. Okay, close it and simply start painting over there like that. Let's increase the spacing even more. Go to Windows, Brush Settings. Let's increase it even more. We don't want to make it in one go. Just paint in one direction. Do not paint this way and then this way. See the directions change. And that's why we checked on direction so that we have complete control of direction. And when we paint over here, we will paint in this direction, okay? 
keep that in mind and that area will be of different color zoom in and don't worry about the color right now okay zoom out it's too much zoomed in see this hair is coming out of any some random direction we don't want that to happen so you paint in this direction only do not paint in any random direction that will look strange don't do that okay so make sure to paint in just one direction You can add some extra hair over there and as you go down you have to add some extra hair over this because that area is going off so more hairs will appear right so as you can see in the corners there are a lot of hairs it doesn't actually have so many hairs but the angle is such that it appears so for example if you look at my side it doesn't have that much hair it isn't that dense but if I move my head this way it looks denser because the angle is such you're seeing more hair right so as you go down you have to add more hair over there and make sure to maintain the direction do not ignore it right now I know the color of the hair looks funky and we need to change that and make sure to paint in one direction you do not paint in this direction hold the mouse down paint in the opposite direction do not do it it will look bad okay don't do it just paint one direction So there we go it's all done have a look at the before and after we zoom out it looks so damn realistic before after now there are some hairs which we have painted extra by mistake have a look before after these hairs we need to remove them we can create a mask take the brush and this time choose a normal brush but before you choose a normal brush remember this is not saved save it I know this one is saved but with those settings it's not saved open up the brush settings again and let's just save it click on this button save button and you can name beard okay you can name anything bearding and let's name it something and hit OK and once you save it once you're saving it make sure this is checked include tool settings okay we have already saved it now that's done now let's take care of color right here the color looks very strange because the color of the hair here is different let's create a solid color adjustment layer click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color Choose any color that you like, hit OK, and then create a clipping mask. By holding the Alt or Option, Alt for Windows, Option for Mac, and then click on the line between them. This will limit the color just to the beard. Now you can double click on it and change the color to whatever you like. We need to darken it, so click on B. Let's darken it a bit. Now that looks like something. If you want to increase the saturation, you can do that as well. Take uh, on the saturation like that. If you want to change the hue, you can do that as well. But in this area, the hair looks all right. But as we gradually go down, the hair doesn't look right. We need to change the color over here. How do we do that? Hit OK again. Simply take the brush and take the normal round brush, okay, soft round brush. Create one more layer and clip it as well by holding the Alt or Option. Click on the line between it and take a sample of this color and just simply paint over this area like that. See? The beard is just painted in that color. And there you have it, before, after. Now that looks natural, doesn't it? What you can also do, you can also go ahead, create a new layer right in here, and you can remove these extra hairs that we don't want. You can use the regular healing brush and just take a sample by holding the Alt or Option. Make sure all layers is checked, and then remove those extra hair from there. That's something which you can also do in this and you can name this hair removal or anything like that you can name this hair removal and you can remove those extra hairs which you do not want over there right so that's what we were looking for but it still doesn't look realistic it still doesn't look realistic because this is an image with a shallow depth of field which means that in this area have a look it's completely in focus as we move towards the edge of the face it's out of focus the beard it's all out of focus if you have a look it's it's all so sharp this cannot be sharp have a look at this it's all so sharp over here and it's all blurred out the ones that we created you can name this facial hair before after this has to be blurred on the edge so we need to blur it out so how do we blur it out 
Simple. First, go ahead and convert this into a smart object so that we can change the values later. Okay. Go to filter, convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now let's apply a tilt shift blur. Go to filter, blur gallery and tilt shift. Now, how does the tilt shift work? Let us understand that. This is the line where the blur starts. This is the line where blur is zero pixels. This is the line where blur is 15 pixels or whatever value you choose over here. Right now it's at 15. Similarly on the opposite side, this is the line where it's zero. This is the line where it is 15 or whatever value. Now let's move the point to this and rotate it in the direction of the blur like so in such directions. And we don't want blur in this direction. No, we just want blur on the left hand side. So let's increase it all the way, take it away from the image. We don't want it. We just want it on this side. Let's move it a little bit and let's start the blur from this particular area. And let's end the blur here. Okay. And choose a less value. This is too much. Let's zoom in and let's choose a proper value for this particular area. How about that value? That looks much more realistic, convincing. Let's choose six. Yes, that is good, but I'll go with four. Yeah, four looks good. Let's start over there. Yes, that is good. That is convincing. Let's go for five. Now you need to test and try different values over there. And once you're satisfied, go with the value. Okay, that is done. Hit OK. Now that is processed. Have a look at this before after. Now you can go ahead and add more hair if you want to. So you can create new layers and in the same process, you can add more hair. Just keep in mind one thing. If you're adding hair, just simply let me show you something. If you're adding hair, let's choose that brush. Bearding. If you're painting something around here, make sure to paint in a proper direction. If we paint in this particular direction, it doesn't look right. But if we paint from bottom to top like that, it starts looking good. So find out what direction you need to paint and depending on the area, the directions will change. So keep in mind just the direction and everything will be good. So this is the final result. This is something I did. I painted some extra hair. It takes some time, but it gives a really, really realistic result. So that's pretty much it for this video. That's how to create highly realistic facial hair in Photoshop. And always remember the secret to creating the realistic hair is to create a realistic brush. And the secret to creating the realistic brush is to sample from, is to create a brush from the image itself. Just to sum it up, first of all, you need to find, you need to scout for that perfect hair, which you can use as a sample for the brush. Once you find that perfect hair, keep it on its own layer. Okay, bring it on its own layer and turn off the layer in which the subject is. Then make it black and white, use curves, erase it, do whatever you want, but the objective is, we need a black hair on a white background. Do that. All you need to do, bring out a black hair on a white background. Then create a merged layer of all of that. Select that area, go to edit, define brush preset, create a brush of that particular sample. Then delete all those junk that you have created, turn on the subject layer, and then go to brush settings under the windows menu. Okay, windows, brush settings. Your objective is, to get the texture of the brush as if it is right there on the image. Okay. Move those sliders, the jitters and all that stuff. You need that texture inside the brush settings to match with that of the existing facial hair. As in this case, it is the mustache. Okay. We matched it with this particular area. After you do that, paint in. You can always go ahead, use clipping masks to change the color. And at the end, if the portrait has shallow depth of field, don't forget to blur the areas which are away from the face. I hope this video helped you and if it did, do consider sharing it and like it. And don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks and tutorials. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.